This micro lecture is on refraction. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, so one to two sentence summary and your follow-up questions on Google Forms. So before we get to talking about refraction, let's talk about wave speed or let's review it real fast. We talked before about this idea that the material a wave is traveling through determines how fast it can go. So light, when it's traveling through empty space, so like a vacuum, no air, nothing in the way, in one second it can go 186,000 miles. But when it's traveling through water, it goes a little bit slower, and when it's traveling through grass, glass, a little bit slower, and when it's traveling through a diamond, even slower yet. Same thing goes for sound, and really this is true for any wave. So that brings us to this point, this idea that normally things travel in a straight line, meaning if we have a beam of light, it's going to go in a straight line. It's not going to like curve and go in a different direction. It's not going to bend or anything like that, unless it hits something. Well, when light or any other wave goes into a new material where it travels faster or slower than it used to, then its path is going to bend. Um, in this case, it looks almost like we broke the light beam, hence the term refraction, or fract, meaning break, is kind of embedded within that. So, more simply put, refraction is the bending of a wave, um, or the path of a wave, due to a change in speed. Now, it can be speeding up or slowing down, and it's not that the um, wave is choosing to speed up or slow down, it's just it can only move a certain speed in the material it's traveling in. So a little FYI, since the speed of a wave is determined by the material, um, although this happens when it enters new materials, it can also happen within a material, um, such as if the properties of a material change, like let's think of, um, I don't know, air. If air is all of a sudden getting more dense and more dense and more dense, then we can actually cause a refraction um, even though it's still in air, even though it's not a new type of air or things like that. Its properties are changing enough that we can still cause this to happen. So one example of this is ocean waves move faster when they are in deep water and slower when they are in shallow water. So as we get closer to the coastline here, um, the water gets shallower, and so the waves are going to move at different speeds. So out in deep water, we get kind of parallel lines because all of the waves move at the same speed. But as we get into closer to shore, they move slower, and so we can see that their path literally starts to bend and change. Um, and so that's what's going on here. Another example um, is that this can sometimes cause distortion in images, so things that we see. So here we know this straw is a complete straw. It'll work when we kind of use it to drink this water. Um, but because of the refractive properties of water compared to air, we get this weird thing happening where it looks like there's a break in the straw. That's because literally the light is bending. Now the straw is going in and it's actually sitting in right here, um, but because of the way the water is bending it, it looks like it's over here. And here it actually bends it so much it looks like it goes and breaks and goes the opposite way. Um, and this is really actually how lenses work. So if you think about contact lenses or glasses, they work by bending light in a way that it is easier for us to see or corrects anything that is not, um, not correct in our vision. Um, so that leads us to this question of how do we tell which waves uh, or which way waves will bend? Well, I like to use a wagon wheel analogy. And so what I'd like you to do is pause this real fast and think to yourself, which way will the wagon wheels go? If we have them rolling towards um, this grass and they hit the grass, will they follow path A? Will they follow something closer to path B? Or will they follow something closer to path C? Take a second to think about it. All right, so in this case, they would actually follow path, what was this, C. The reason why is as they get closer, we have one wheel that hits the grass, and so it's going to move slower on the grass, whereas the one that's on the cement is going to be moving faster. So over the next second, the one on the grass is only going to move, let's say, a couple inches, versus the one on the cement is going to move a couple feet. That's going to cause it to pivot or turn. So in this case, we see it kind of bends um, towards the normal line or towards uh, kind of the vertical line because it's entering a slower material. Now, it's not that um, we imagine waves as having wheels, but they follow the same pattern as these wagon wheels will do. So oftentimes when I'm uh, solving problems about what way will a wave bend, I'll actually physically draw in little wagon wheels and imagine it. And I just pay attention to which material is faster, which is slower, and then I can determine which way the light ray or sound wave or whatever it is is going to bend. 
So one example here, um, we have a laser coming in, and again it bends towards the normal line because it's moving faster in air and slower in water. So if we imagine wagon wheels, the wheel right here would hit first, it would slow it down, and it would then pivot this way. If instead we had it go the opposite way, we can see that it goes away from the normal line or away from the vertical. So it starts with a fast material and then this wheel on the left would get um, out first and so it would move a lot faster and that would cause this to bend away from the normal line. So if you prefer, you can also just memorize that as it enters a faster material, it bends away from the normal line and as it enters a slower material, it bends towards the normal line. Or like me, you can use the wagon wheel analogy. Now, Snell's law, we're not going to go through this tons, but determines uh, this relationship. So if we look at the angle of incidence right here and the angle of refraction right here, we can actually use this um, formula to calculate things, where N1 is the index of refraction, or kind of a measure of how fast uh, something or the wave moves in that material, and then theta1 is the first angle of incidence, and then this is the material it's going into and the angle of refraction. That's it for this one, three or more bullet points worth of notes, so one to two sentence summary and your follow-up questions on Google Forms. If Snell's Law is a little confusing to you, don't worry about it too much. We're not going to focus very heavily on this for this unit, um, but give it a shot because it may show up um, briefly on a test to kind of um, check for people who have a higher level mastery of information.